every single thing that people hate about Big Lick, the racing industry does times 10, actually probably times 100. The Justice Department is winding down one of the biggest horse doping investigations in US history. Tonight, you'll hear the incriminating wiretaps that helped crack the case, convicting 29 veterinarians, horse trainers, and drug distributors. Horse racing, known as the sport of kings, found its crown badly tarnished last spring when a dozen horses died during the weeks surrounding the Kentucky Derby. Needless to say, horse racing not only has the number one death toll of horses in our entire industry by a multitude, but they also violate pretty much all ethical standards. But before we get into this video, you guys, I have to say a big thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Animal Nutrition Calculator. If you're unfamiliar with Animal Nutrition Calculator, these are the best nutrition calculators in the world for animals of all kinds, ranging from dogs all the way to exotic pets and livestock. These calculators are tailored to fit all of your animal's individual needs based on what you're trying to discover about their nutrition. Before you guys go out and buy your bag of food or when you bring home your new puppy or kitten, definitely go on Animal Nutrition Calculator as your first step. These calculators are just $4.99, literally cheaper than a cup of coffee, and they will simplify your pet's nutrition like that. This allows you to stop relying on pet food brands for what you should be feeding your animal to meet their nutritional requirements and take your animal's nutrition into your own hands. This is really, really important because as we know, pet food brands will often tell you to feed the wrong amount of food, most likely feeding a lot more than what your animal actually needs, which is exactly why we are in a pet obesity epidemic at the moment. For those of you who would like help with building food bowls specifically, you can head on over to their social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, etc. You guys can click my link to get 25% off your purchase. That link is gonna be the first link down below. One other thing I wanted to point out, I am not riding for the entire year. I'm just going to be focused on training my horses new tricks every single month. Last month we taught my horses how to spin, parts one, two, and three, and this month we are teaching the bow. If you guys would like to follow along and teach your horses the same tricks, these tricks are so easy and I really simplify them for everybody. You can click the link and follow me on Patreon or members. I really appreciate it and help support this channel. So I'm I'm excited to see you guys over there. In 2019, the equine injury database revealed a disturbing trend, showcasing an incredibly disturbing fatality rate of 1.6 horses per 1,000 race starts. Not only does horse racing have an extremely high fatality rate, in 2023 alone, more than 600 horses were killed on racetracks in the United States. And this number is only what these racetracks are actually willing to submit. The amount of stress that is put on these very, very young horses is insane. Horses between two and four years old are the most susceptible to dying at these racetracks. This is the prime age in which horses are growing and developing, and this immense stress is being put on their bones and their joints and their body overall that their body's just not able to cope with. It can't handle that, which is why it breaks down over time, race after race after race. If you guys want to see an entire breakdown of how many horses and their names are killed in the United States racing every single year, Horse Racing Wrongs literally keeps a database on their website 
it's insane the amount of diligence that this organization does to hold the racing industry accountable. And to be honest, it's actually crazy to me that with all of this evidence of how many animals are killed on these tracks every year, that they haven't changed anything. Now, everybody in the racing industry wants to talk about how, oh, they've implemented changes like the number of times you can whip a horse, the paddings in the whips, etc. None of that matters. I mean, we already know that whipping horses does hurt them. We know that horse skin thickness is actually less than humans. And we also know that horses have more nerve endings, meaning that they feel more pain than people do. This is exactly why horses can feel the tiniest little fly land on their butt and swish it off with their tail. They're not these big giant animals that are completely immune to pain. So the microscopic list of so-called improvements that have happened in the racing industry just doesn't hold up. It just doesn't matter. And that's not an excuse to keep the industry going because let's be honest guys, the death rate is not going down year by year, even though the jockey club would like to say and believe that. More and more horses are going to keep dying at these tracks until enough people speak out against this. The horse racing industry is responsible for literal billions of dollars in the economy. There are so many people who bet on horses, who raise these horses, the grooms that work for the people who own the horses, the jockeys, etc. This is a multi-billion dollar industry with tons of money behind it. They don't care that they are killing horses. And that's the reason why horse racing is still around. And that's also the reason why horse racing is not as hated as other sports that have less money to fund them like Big Lick. Big Lick is a significantly smaller industry of people and significantly smaller horse shows. They don't have the type of money funding them to be able to suppress all of the bad news or keep people from speaking out. And it actually baffles me when I see people on YouTube talk about how much they hate Big Lick, but then I see them supporting horse racing or defending it, or people who were once in the racing industry defending it. Horse racing is literally worse in every way over Big Lick. And you might say, but what about the drugging? Big Lick's main problem is the soaring of the horses in their industry. I totally agree, horse soaring is absolutely horrible. But guess what? They drug horses in the racing industry every single day. There is an extreme problem surrounding illegal drug use in horse racing during the races themselves and also during training practices. Drugs that are commonly used are anti-inflammatory medications. These will help manage pain that race horses experience when they're pushed past their breaking point, as well as any inflammation. A lot of race horses are also receiving medications to counteract conditions like exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhages. But the biggest one is the extremely large and unregulated usages of steroids across the entire industry, which most of these horses are on. The entire purpose of drugging racehorses is to keep them running on racetracks for longer. There's a common theme here. A lot of these drugs are used to hide injuries. All that these horses are, are just dollar signs to these individuals. A lot of these owners will literally dump horses when they're done using them, either onto unsuspecting people who buy an off the track thoroughbred as a event horse or a jumper, or they will send them to slaughter, which yes, that does happen. These horses do end up in the slaughter pipeline, but majority of the time, and this is the most sickening, a lot of these owners, if you can even call them that, will euthanize their race horses. It's just crazy because a lot of these owners don't even put in the most minimal amount of effort to rehome a lot of these horses. And you have to consider most of these really wealthy owners are going through hundreds, if not thousands of horses. So when one of them is just becoming a sunken cost, essentially, 
then they just euthanize it. It's easier to do that than it is to find the horse another home. In a way, I almost think that larger industries in the horse community, like horse racing, are honestly using Big Lick as a scapegoat to kind of hide in the shadows because now there's this whole stigma, as I mentioned earlier, surrounding Big Lick. Big Lick is basically synonymous with horse abuse at this point. You can't go anywhere on social media and watch a Big Lick video and not see abuse, abuse, abuse in the comment section, not see these people reported left, right, and center, not see a billion news articles on shutting down Big Lick or even the new act that was passed recently. I'm pretty sure this act was specifically created to fight against Big Lick, which don't get me wrong, I'm super happy to see this. It's very important that we start having real legislation in the industry and real laws to shut down horrible, abusive sports. But I honestly feel like People in the racing industry, they have enough money to keep attention off of them and off of the amount of horses they kill every year. Big Lick doesn't kill this many horses. Actually, I don't think Big Lick kills horses at all. I think that Big Lick largely just soars them and puts them through hell and back just to get a giant, disgusting gait. But a lot of these horses at Big Lick shows are not actually pushed to the point where they die. Now, I'm sure that may have happened a couple of times where someone took it too far, even though all of this is taking it too far, but you get what I mean, and the horse actually died from soaring or abuse. That is probably likely that it happened in this industry because it's horrible and disgusting. But horse racing is literally killing basically two horses a day in the United States alone. And yet for some reason, Big Lick has a worse reputation. I think that that's insane. I'm not advocating for Big Lick in any way at all. Big Lick deserves to die in a hole and all the people who go to Big Lick shows should absolutely feel such guilt and shame for supporting such an incredibly terrible thing. But so should all of the people that go to horse races. All of those people are in the same situation. You're supporting an industry that doesn't care about animals, that is driving animals into the ground, literally, killing two horses a day in the United States alone, illegally drugging horses to mask injuries, and dumping them when they're no longer of value, not to mention they have incredibly abusive training practices as well. Every single thing that people hate about Big Lick the racing industry does times 10, actually probably times 100. But again, the racing industry has enough money to cover all of this up. So nobody cares and nobody talks badly about it. Horse racing should be synonymous with horse abuse, just like Big Lick, because it not only is worse, but it's getting worse every single year. So yeah, that's my rant into the horse racing industry. Don't take things at face value, you guys. Just because this industry has more money to glamorize what you're seeing at surface level doesn't mean that they're the angels of the equestrian community and that they're making a change. Think for yourself and actually analyze the data and statistics coming out every single year. I'll leave some good resources down in the description below for everybody. But yeah, horse racing is more abusive than Big Lick and nobody should ever support it. And you shouldn't support people who support horse racing or people who have ever defended it because horse racing is actually disgusting.